Well, hi everybody, and welcome to my shop. And uh, this video is going to be just a little different from my usual video. Um, I'm going to be showing you some photographs to begin with for the first part of the work I'm going to be uh, doing here. And then the last part is going to be in some videos. But the, these videos were shot just with my telephone. And uh, they're, they're okay, but they're not the best. And they're not shot here in my shop. They're shot in the uh, larger shop that I go to once a week. Now, this is a radio um, um, that I've been working on, uh, and this is the last step. Actually, this radio was basically a lost cause, to be honest with you. And we'll start by looking at the photograph that's in front of you now. So what you're looking at is uh, an IF coil, and what you're not seeing is the other IF coil. There should be two sets of IF coils in here one for AM and one for FM. But all you see is the FM one. The AM one is missing. The reason it's missing is because someone previous literally ripped this can off, ripped the metal can off, and uh, damaged the uh, coil so badly that the AM coil was literally ripped right out, uh, wires and all. So, um, hmm, what I'm gonna try to do is put that coil uh, back in. By the way, if you just look towards the right of the of the uh, picture, to the right side of the picture, you can see an IF can that's intact. Um, so uh, whoever it is who yanked it out of there must have been yanking pretty hard. So this is the schematic for the uh, radio. And if you just follow the red line, uh, let's start right at the bottom where you see the red line coming across and it goes into a, a 1k resistor. Uh, that, that resistor plays an important part in the story so uh, you'll hear more about that later. You follow the red line up you see it goes through first one coil and then around through another coil then it works its way over to the plate of an ECH81 tube. And the reason it's colored red is because it's carrying uh, high voltage to the plate of the tube. So this is how all, almost all radios are built, nothing particularly special about this. Except uh, in this case, the uh, one IF can has both the AM uh, coil, uh, the 456 uh, coil, and the FM coil, which is at 10.7, uh, much higher uh, IF frequency. So the actual coils that I'm going to install are the two at the top. Um, and I wish I could point uh, with a pointer or something like that, but you can't see my cursor and I, I can't do anything except talk about it. So anyway, they're right, uh, they're numbered L201, L202. So that's the part that's been broken away. Okay, so this is a close-up of what's left in the radio. And this is the remaining FM coil. And if you look at the base of it, you can see that it's also broken. It just didn't get it just didn't get broken right off. Um, it's not ready to fall out or anything like that. It's about halfway broken. So, and also you see that shiny, shiny white wire that's right in the middle. And if you follow it up, you can tell it actually just stops. It does. It just stops right there. Uh, that's one of the broken broken wires, and uh, that must be some kind of uh, uh, solder that was put on when they originally put this together. Um, you can kind of see that it's not just one single strand, that there's something going on there, because you can see the wire has a bit of a twist to it. And there's actually four wires in there, individually twisted together. And, and the broken wire that uh, is uh, part of the broken wires that went to the AM coil. So here is the AM coil. At the top of it there, you can see the fitting for the FM coil. So you can kind of imagine the FM coil would be sitting beside it uh, if it was out, out of the radio too. And you can see the wires hanging out. Um, there are four of them all together. And you can see there's a, a coil at the top and a coil at the bottom. And there's four wires, two for each coil. Kind of straightforward. I noticed there's something else unusual about this uh, IF. I've never noticed this before, but just to the right of those coils, are some black rods. They look like ferrite rods or carbon rods. I'm not sure what they are. And I'm not sure why they're there. But I'd have to guess they're affecting the uh, 
the tuning of these uh, of these coils somehow. Never seen that before. So here's my uh, Argus rendering of uh, the circuitry around the, uh, the, the 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 two IF coils. And you know what? You really do have to sit down and draw this stuff out because the most surprising thing is, uh, you know, e each coil, each coil is connected to a capacitor. And you, you can see there's four capacitors there. So you expect each pair of coil wires to be across one of those capacitors. And that's true. Except if you look at the lower uh, coil, the lower, lower circle, on the right side of it, you see the two wires coming off of it. That's one of the sets of coil wires. But instead of going to a capacitor nearby, they swing up to the capacitor up by the other coil. So, um, you know, it's not intuitive. They can't really tell just from the position of the components just what they're hooked up to. So, uh, anyway, I had to do this to get my head around what is going on. It was really quite a challenge, in fact, doing this. Um, because uh, limited information uh, to go on on exactly which wire goes exactly where. It's quite a puzzle and uh, uh, I just took it one, one step at a time uh, to figure it out. Now here's, here's another um, trick if you like or technique, very simple technique. Um, these wires all have a coating on them of course, they're all insulated. So you can't solder to them without getting rid of that coating. So the, the technique I'm using here is uh, soldering iron. And that piece of, of wood there that looks like it's been burned, well, it has been burned. It's, it's a heavy, heavily, lube, heavily used piece of wood. And um, we uh, um, use that for uh, scraping off the insulation from, from wires. So you just lay the wire up against the wood and just start scraping away with the soldering iron. Uh, I like to have a little dab of solder on the end of the iron so the uh, wires in a bit of a pool of solder as you're doing that and then the uh, wire will tin up right away and when you see it uh, tin up with solder you know hey I've got the insulation off and it's it's ready to be connected and by the way this stuff's really small I was having a heck of a time seeing it uh, so it's, it's almost easier in these photographs so here's a finished wire um, and you can see the, the tinning uh, that's on it. Okay, now, when, when, when the coil got ripped away, it didn't get suddenly any extra wire because of that. It's got the same amount of wire it had to begin with. So really, if I just put the coil in and try to touch all the wires back together the way they were, there would be just enough wire to kind of touch. You, know, you wouldn't be able to overlap it twist it or do anything with it. So I had to extend every one of these wires. Uh, and this is my uh, solder job here, which um, there's nothing pretty about this, believe me. Um, again, this is so microscopic, and I'm sorry the photo doesn't really do it justice, but it's all so microscopic. I was uh, barely able to see what I was doing. I had a uh, magnifying lens, a powerful one, that was constantly examining uh, what I was doing make sure that uh, at least there was some semblance of physical connection here. There's another shot uh, of, uh, of a connection. Um, and mechanically and electrically it's fine, but uh, it's not too artistic, is it? So there they all are now. And they are still a little messy. I cleaned up some of the loose ends there that, uh, that are still on for this photo. And again, uh, those wires are so small, this photograph makes it look easy, but uh, but it was not. This was very challenging to try. And, uh, and I haven't even got it back in the radio yet. Oh, okay, so now it's back in the radio. <laughs> it's uh, just put in place there. It kind of popped into uh, its holder again. And uh, gee, in this photo, I think the wires have been soldered on. Uh, you know what, I'm honestly not sure now. And uh, I was quite concerned about it, uh, creating a short circuit. I also know you can't be flexing these wires forever, so I kind of wanted to get it in and get it connected. Now, um, 
the first Okay, so I'm just about ready now to test the test the radio out. Now I'm sorry I'm showing you this kind of blurry, shaky picture, but there's something to take note of, and lucky I took this picture. I wouldn't be showing it to you if it didn't have something important in it. So if you look kind of just below the very center of the uh, image, there's a resistor there you can see. It's brown, black, red. It's the 1000 ohm resistor that we saw earlier in the uh, uh, circuit diagram. Uh, and this resistor carries uh, all the plate current. And uh, usually when you find a 1000 ohm resistor in series with plate current, what it is is it's kind of like a fuse or a protector. It's designed to uh, take the heat, so to speak, before the parts do or something more important uh, fails. Such, such as the coils that I'm working on. If you didn't have that resistor there and something were wrong, a short circuit of some sort, uh, you could burn out a coil. And that's a much more serious problem than burning out a thousand ohm resistor. So see it there. See it here. That's a much better picture of it. Now. What happened between the last picture and this picture? Because something did happen. The colors of the resistor are shot. Yeah. And I only wish I'd had my video camera running at this point, because I would have seen, uh, would have caught a really nice shot of smoke coming up out of that uh, resistor. So as it turned out, I had connected the wires incorrectly. Uh, but no surprise, really. I uh, studied it a little bit. I think I actually got confused over which wire was which. I had them connected correctly in my own mind, but trust me on that. And uh, But unfortunately, electrically, no, they were not correct. And this resistor started cooking. So, yeah. The reason I'm showing you this too, because <laughs> there's a, a little story that'll show up in the videos you're going to watch in a moment, but it's not completely clear what is happening. So. So here's what happened. The uh, circuit uh, schematic shows a tube. I think it was an ECC85, but I might be mistaken. <coughs> Excuse me, in the tuner. And I just casually pulled the tube out, thinking maybe we should test it because the uh, FM didn't seem to be working. I pulled it out and it was this, a 12AT7. Hmm. Well, they're both triodes, uh, dual triodes, uh, and uh, we concluded quickly, aha, wrong, wrong tube in the radio. So, uh, so I got a correct tube, the ECC85, I think it was, put it in the radio, tried it, the tube didn't even heat up. So uh, I won't say much more than that, but when you see us fiddling around, um, in the video, you'll understand better what uh, what the story is around this. I hope, anyway. So, uh, so what follows next from here is the radio being tested and operated uh, in the big shop. So, hope you enjoy it. Okay, switch on. videoing the smoke not coming up. But I haven't pushed the FM button yet. It'll take a long time for them to warm up. Hip, hip, hip. Is there noise? 
kiss? I hear noise. I mean, it made a little noise last time, too. I mean, even... Uh, did I put that tube in? I did put the tube in. Oh. Oh, wah! Try tuning it. Huh? right it? down to the bottom of the band. Yikes. Yeah, it's not... Keep going. Here. Could be something scratching on the... It was a short in the yeah. plate set. Yeah. The short old boys, wave. I'm on short wave right now. Okay. The old boys would actually bend those plates to uh, trim the tuning, right? That's right. That's why the, the outside ones here? are split. Yeah. yeah, that could be it right there. That's probably what do you mean? Down, and exactly what old boys? Hey, what'd you do to it? Oh, with your finger. Something a little, a little weird about it. Okay, ready for the FM? Mm -hmm. And we will see now. Oh, try it in first. So. Well, okay. Okay, I'm drawing down. I, I might have to lift the thing up to push the button. Oh, I see. Yeah, I gotta lift the radio up here. There we go. I think that's AM. Hey! Now, do we dare push that up on button? This <laughs> okay, here all eyes on that resistor. Here we go. Any cookage? Volume up. No sound. Oh. Something there. A little blurb. Oh, no tube? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah no it's tube. down in there. It's way down there. Now, there could be other problems. Oh, well, it's uh, got no voltage. Hmm? It's got low voltage. What? What does? Oh, that's right. We don't have it on full blast. Oh, I hear a little bit. Did you, did you turn it up? No. No, full, 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 oh, no, uh, full voltage. Okay, there it goes. Stand back, everybody. Are you on FM or AM now? Um, I think it's on FM. I'm not sure what the antenna is. I'm on the bottom antenna. The upper one. Looks like the upper one. Okay. No, that's put it Where's the back panel? This will reach. This will almost reach. <laughs> this is our back panel. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Hey! Listen! Yep, that's the upper one. So I, I, I hear something. Well, is that my imagination? Oh no. Oh, doesn't matter where you tune it. Well, it could be because it's badly tuned. Because we got it tur turned up so loud too. Yeah, these things could be a mile out now. Yeah, and they're probably relying on having and that. And we knew it was, uh, we worked out it was the, uh, what did we work out? Was it the FM one or the AM one in the end? The AM was the one that was broken. The so FM was so still on there, so although you wouldn't think, the bottom. Yeah, you wouldn't think the FM would be a way out of tune then. No, nope, it wouldn't. But I think that's probably where we're at. Here. Full volume there. Let me try the button again here. Is that a little better? I do. Can I hold it down? A little isn't really making enough of a difference. Well, we're a big step ahead, yep. I think. Now, there's a bunch of extra wire there. Did that come from somewhere? No, that's me. That, that's me. Okay. So I'll get rid of I mean, all that. It wouldn't matter because it was, it's on the AM circuit anyway. Yeah. Well, I'll cut all that away because it yep. looks like looks like it's wired properly. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm Although we're... The sound. Well, go back to AM. Uh, you can. A little higher. There we go. Now, now you need the...
hey, you know, we should turn one of those coils and see which one's AM, which one's FM. For sure. Oh, there you are. <laughs> no difference at all. I'm not sure where they make it out. Me neither. Is there one of these uh, loop buttons? Maybe. Well, the AM. Is the AM, but you know what? This tube's not heating or doing anything. Well, we'll I just, in the, in I just tested it. Unless that heater is off until you push FM, that's very un unlikely, right? It is unlikely. It's very unlikely. That looks like a heater lead somehow with those chokes on it. What do you think? Well, I don't know. We're over my head now. We're on reduced power. Okay. Well, it does make them take a long time to warm up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you don't need to be. If you've got everything else working and all you're doing is changing the tube, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't see any heat in it at all. Yeah. Well, can I put the main power on? Yeah. Give it give it the works. Give it the go. Oh, some guy stuck the uh, 12 AT in here and burned out some parts with it. So? Well, I don't know. That's my uh, that's my theory. Although you know, the twelve AT was hot. That will make sense. And this isn't. The twelve AT has no business. Twelve AT have no business being in in a FM tuner, right? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Ooh. It's uh. They could have designed it for twelve AT seven. right from the start here. Transmission. They're flexible. Got 